today the Supreme Court ruled a long, a long, long debated issue of affirmative action. They ruled 6-3 down ideological lines that under the 14th Amendment, you cannot discriminate based on the color of someone's skin. Weird. I mean, noble concept, right? It, it, no one would think that anyone would have a problem with this. I would think everybody would be in favor of it. But the three liberals on the Supreme Court dissented. And I think it's very important and telling as to why. Now, the decision was based on the 14th Amendment, which specifically granted full citizenship, legal acknowledgement, and equal, keyword, equal protections under the law for freed slaves. Now, today's decision was rooted particularly in the second half of Section 1 of the 14th Amendment, saying, quote, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. Essentially saying, everyone must be treated equal. Now, much to the chagrin of the newest Supreme Court Justice Ketanji Brown-Jackson, the 14th Amendment was in fact passed by 94% Republicans and, oh, zero Democrats. Hmm. Well, not much has changed. In short, this decision ruled that current reverse discrimination is not, not, a legally permitted remedy for past discrimination, whether it's real or perceived. In, in this case, folks, colleges cannot consider the color of your skin anymore, but must rather base admissions, Harvard being the main school here, on the merits of your performance, dare I say, qualifications over color. Now cue the meltdowns over on MSNBC. If... Indeed, affirmative action is now banned nationwide from the college admission process. What is the impact? We will return to uh, elite institutions, more, more specifically, uh, being the space for a particular population, for predominantly white and Asian students. We will begin to see a kind of segregated uh, uh, higher education landscape. This guy and everyone else who carries similar views, they are the problem because his point of view assumes that black and brown students can't achieve. What kind of message is that? Imagine a child being told that during his or her whole life that they cannot and they won't achieve based on the farce of institutional racism. That none of these clowns on TV, by the way, can give you a single example of. That's what bothers me the most about this. Most children will never succeed in that environment. And that's the real disservice. This man is insinuating that there aren't many qualified black or brown or whatever minorities. I reject that. Look no further than Ben Carson. He was raised by a single mother with a library card and became one of the most respected brain surgeons in the world. The problem that needs to be fixed is in culture, not laws, but rather values. Quit trying to say this is some systemic failure that can't be righted, you know, or by reversed racism. That's, that's still racism. Now, of course, Whoopi Goldberg, of all people, decided to weigh in, and boy, oh boy, do I disagree with her. And so he doesn't, he doesn't get it. Well, let me pose this question to you, Justice Thomas. Could your mother and father vote in this country? Because had the 14th Amendment actually had us on equal footing, they would have been able to vote. And you know why that changed? Because people got out and made it change. If we didn't have to, no one would do it. Who wants to get hit by water from a, a water hose? Nobody. But that's what people did in order to get the vote. So when you say you don't know what diversity is, I say you're full of it. Okay. I don't know whether or not... Justice Clarence Thomas' parents could vote or not, but her grievance is something rooted in over 80 years ago that has been definitely corrected, definitively. There's no modern thing that she can refer to that is holding people back from voting. The woman, the woman sitting right there with an estimated 50 to $60 million net worth who garners a salary of like $5 million plus dollars a year is going to lecture us about institutional discrimination? Lady, you are proof your assertions don't exist. Another one, Katanji Brown-Jackson, a black woman on the highest court of the land, who, by the way, can't define what a woman is, mind you, echoed the same sentiment in her dissent with, quote, let them eat cake obliviousness. Today, the majority pulls the ripcord and announces colorblindness for all but by legal fiat, but deeming race irrelevant in law does not make it so in life. 
I mean, yeah, she kind of actually makes my point that preferential rates treatment has no place in law. Donald Trump, actually, funny enough, we did this the other night. The only living president that does not have any lineage to slave owners, mind you, had this to say, quote, this is a great day for America. People with extraordinary ability and everything else necessary for success are finally being rewarded. This is the ruling everyone was waiting for and hoping for. It will keep us competitive with the rest of the world. We're going back to all merit-based, and that's the way it should be, end quote. Can I get a hell yes? Now, on the other side, Joe Biden, the man who eulogized a KKK member, Robert Byrd, if you recall, went the total other way on this. I believe our colleges are stronger when they're racially diverse. Our nation is stronger because we use what we because we are tapping into the full range of talent in this nation. I also believe that while talent, creativity and hard work are everywhere across this country, not equal opportunity. It is not everywhere across this country. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not what he said in 1977 when he told America that certain desegregation policies would cause your kids to grow up in a, and I'm quoting here, racial jungle. How about Biden's history with school buses in the 1970s, where he said, and I'm quoting again, the new integration plans being offered are really just quota systems to assure a certain number of blacks, Chicanos, his words, not mine, or whatever in each school. To that, to me, is the most racist concept you can come up with. Again, our president really said that. The most important point to take away from all this, though, is that liberals want to give some people preferential treatment simply because of the color of their skin. That, by definition, is racism. Because if you're giving help to one group via quotas or by lowering standards, you are thereby sentencing other races to a higher bar for the same position. The issue we face now is that one side has been told by Democrats that they deserve a leg up, convincing an entire swath of society that they are actual victims. Democrats made this problem. And instead of criticizing Clarence Thomas, maybe they should be encouraging people to be the best they can be.